Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got some pretty cool things to go over. A massive rumor about Pokemon Legends EA has popped up. We also have some new updates regarding Pokemon Go and some new events that have been announced as well. Plenty of things to break down and take a look at today. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. It's trying at 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new, ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, we have a pretty cool Pokemon update to go over today regarding Pokemon Go. Uh, so, we have Cerebi here tweeting out saying, Cerebi update, Pokemon Go is rolling out a new feature that allows for you to join raid battles remotely from your friend list without need for an invite. So, this is how it's going to look in the actual sort of friends list section. So, as you can see, it says, trainer name is it a Gengar raid. And then, basically, I'm assuming you can click on that. And then it will allow you to then join that raid for uh, with, with obviously using a remote raid pass. The thing I don't understand about this is, does this now stop the limit of 10 friends joining? Because originally you could invite like 10 people. And obviously if only like two of those people joined, you couldn't invite anybody else. Which is really annoying because you should have just been able to invite up to 10 people. And then as soon as those 10 friends have joined, you can't invite anyone else. That would have been a much better way of doing it. But now I think this sort of like goes around that because you're not inviting anyone so i assume you could invite 10 people but then other people as well that look on their friend list um would also be able to see that i feel like there has to be some sort of notification though because you're not going to just be on your friends list the whole time when you're playing pokemon go so maybe it pops up in the bottom right like a little notification saying so and so is about to do this raid uh, or just something like that because you no one's going to be checking their friends list really just keeping an eye on like raids and stuff but either way it's definitely a really cool feature i'm very happy about it um just because it helps the rural like the players that obviously don't have local groups and stuff like that so yeah big fan of that uh moving on we do also have a new pokemon go update that's also been announced we have cerebi here tweeting out saying cerebi update the pokemon go max out final event has been revealed it runs november the 27th at 10 a.m to December the 1st at 8 p.m. local time. And it adds Galarian Corsola and Cursola, as well as Shiny Regieleki and Regidrago into the game. So before, Regidrago and Regieleki were Shiny locked in Pokemon Go. Obviously, they're available in the main games in the Crown Tundra DLC, but now you can actually get Shiny Regieleki and Regidrago. So let's take a look at this uh, information regarding um, this whole event. This is what it's on the actual Pokemon Go website. So it says Max Out Final, obviously Wednesday the 27th, to uh, Sunday, December the 1st. The event bonuses, you get an additional 5,000 XP awarded for, succe uh, for successful raids. So obviously very useful. A lot of people are going to be doing raids to get the shiny Regis. So you're getting an extra 5,000 XP, which obviously will be doubled to 10,000 XP with a lucky egg. Going to be very, very useful. You get half hatch distance for eggs placed in incubators during the event. And then the remote raid pass limit will be increased to, de uh, to 10 during the event. We have some Pokemon debuts. So obviously the Coral Pokemon. Galarian Corsola and its evolution Cursula will make their Pokemon Go debuts. Also, you'll be able to uh, hatch shiny Galarian Corsola if you're lucky. So the shiny also into the game. During this event, Galarian Corsola will be available to hatch from 7 kilometer eggs. And then with the wild encounters, we get Grookey, Scorbunny, Sobble, uh, Sobble, should I say, Squovit, Wooloo and Phalanx. And then some trainers might even find a Hatina as well. And then in raids... You're going to be able to find in one stars Grookey, Scorbunny, Sobble. In three stars, Galarian, Weezing, and Phalanx. In five star raids, Zacian, Zamazenta, Regilecki, and Regidrago, all of which can be shiny. And then also in Mega Raids, you're going to be able to find Mega Altaria as well. And then from seven kilometer eggs, you can find Galarian, Meowth, Ponytar, Slowpoke, Farfetch, Corsola, Zigzagoon, Darumaka, Yamask, and Stunfisk. There's going to be field research, there's going to be a paid time research as well. Um, which I think this is an, a, an event exclusive sort of pose, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then also you get an event exclusive ticket as well for $10. Collection challenges, showcases, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, all in all, a pretty cool Pokemon Go event. Um, and again, I don't know when this is going to be, uh, this is going to be rolling out. So I don't know if it's going to be here by the time that event starts. But either way, uh, there's a lot of updates coming to Pokemon Go. So that's that. That's the mobile portion of the of the video. Moving on, though, we have a pretty big Legends EA rumor to take a look at. It was posted on Tuesday, the 19th of November, and it's just titled Pokemon Legends EA, Not Another Leak. Um, so again, on 4chan, as always, take it with a massive grain of salt. There's a lot to kind of dissect here. Um, there is multiple parts to it. Again, doesn't give it any more credibility. Usually when there's this much information, the credibility is not that high because 
in leaks that we've had in the past that are generally true, they just kind of give like bullet points every now, like just not even that many, but I don't know, that kind of it doesn't make it any more credible. But when you know this much information about the game, it just seems uh, very, very unlikely. But either way, let us read on. I feel like we haven't done a 4chan post in a while, so I'm actually kind of excited for this one. But it says the stars Pokemon are Snivy, Scorbunny and Popplio. So already off to a bad start because we're pretty sure the starts Pokemon are going to be the Generation 6 starters. That's the starters that, uh, those are the starters that are on the Anaheim image for Worlds 2025. Riddler Koo also kind of reposted that as well. So it doesn't look like it's going to be Snivy, Scorbunny and Popplio unless, you know, you can get the other Kalo starters very early on as well or something like that. Uh, the game is set in a rather more modern looking era with a normal starter selection, like usual games. Oh, so the starters are the usual Kalos ones, but at the beginning of the game, they get stolen. So the female professor gives you a different choice with Pokemon she uh, she's brought from other regions. So that would be kind of interesting, because Riddler Koo did say that, you know, these were like the starters of, of uh, Legends EA, which was the Anaheim picture. But then they said there was also like something different about them. So maybe that difference is that they are the starters, but they're not the starters that we get. That would be a really cool twist. Because then we still get the forms and stuff of, in this case, um, Superior, Cinderace, and um, Primarina as well. But we also would like, I'd like to think we'd also get the Mega Evolutions as well for the Kalos stars. That would be a cool twist. Uh, but either way, that's apparently the whole starter situation. Uh, the final stages are Superior, which is going to be Grass Electric. Cinderace, which is going to be Fire Fairy, and Primarina, which is going to be Water and Ghost. It looks like a Gen 6 Hex Maniac. Not the typings I would choose for them. I'd definitely make Superior like Grass Dragon or something. Cinderace, I'd definitely make Grass uh, Fire Electric. And then Primarina, I mean, Water Ghost isn't too bad for Primarina. Uh, I wouldn't mind that too much. But uh, yeah, I think, I think Cinderace definitely has to be Fire Electric. And then Superior has to be like Grass Dragon or something like that. Uh, the story involves a multiverse situation. So, the protagonists are from another universe, BO13, and found themselves in the new one, BO24. That just kind of gives me, like, Marvel vibes, you know, where they're like, oh, it's Earth, whatever, like, 138 or something. It just kind of gives me those sort of vibes. But I guess if it's the multiverse, they probably would all be, like, labeled as different universes. In this universe, the Megas are more common and used in battle. I guess if they did do, like, other alternate universes and stuff, then it would allow them to kind of, kind of do anything they want, because it would be a different universe than what we're used to. Um, 20 new Mega Evolutions, 19 regional forms, and 12 new Pokemon. So that would come up at 30, uh, 39, um, uh, 39, 41, 51, 51, like, new Pokemon slash forms. That's quite a lot. I think Legends Arceus had like 21, 22, something like that. So this is more than double, nearly triple uh, the amount of Pokemon. And I know that we haven't had a Pokemon game this year. Um, so that's why maybe there might be more Pokemon. But remember, Legends EA was scheduled for 2024 originally and it got pushed back. Uh, there is a phone-like map like in Arceus and it's called the Z-Phone. Uh, and then all the Pokemon that have Omega in Pokemon X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are in the Pokedex. Uh, and then we have this person here saying didn't ask. Um, and then the Pokedex is larger than Arceus and still has requirements and quests like before but it's not written on paper. So yeah, I mean there's still going to be, you'd like to think, a Pokedex completion aspect of this game. There always is. Um, obviously, Legends Arceus revolved itself around completing the Pokedex. This time, it's about rebuilding the city or doing this sort of city situation. So, the Pokedex will probably be taking a step back. It seems in this new universe, no one has ever completed the Pokedex yet. So, well, that's just terrible. Like, how has nobody completed the Pokedex yet? Uh, riding Pokemon are back and function similar. I mean, we know rideable Pokemon are back because we've seen the um, the patents and stuff for it. Like, that, that's a... That's literally legitimate information, you know, rideable Pokemon are back and also catching Pokemon um, in the overworld is also back as well because the patents have been made for uh, this game. They go on and say, uh, they resemble real life vehicles but with a twist, like a steel electric split evolution of the regional form of Clink resembling an 1800s bike. And then it says, each little region has a problem to be solved regarding a Pokemon going crazy. So I think that means the region of the city. So obviously it does look like it's sort of broken into a, um, I guess like a pizza kind of situation. And each part of the city is going to have its own little 
mini like region section of the city if you will among the new mega evolutions we have the new starter forms and four of the gone crazy pokemon that play as the big boss so i guess a little bit like it was in legends arceus where we have the sort of big alpha pokemon that we have to defeat uh so zygarde obtains uh, a new mega alongside makargo which is going to be fire steel Florgius, xerneas which is going to be fairy psychic and then yveltal so they haven't given yveltal's typing but they've given xerneas's fairy psychic uh, Makago is just really random <laughs> as a Pokemon out of all these. You've got all these legendaries, and then you just got Makago and Florgis, I guess. Um, at some point of the game, you can catch various legendaries like the Generation 3 Trio. And then you can catch the Tapus from Alola, brought there by a portal. A new Tapu is catchable. Tapu War Waruru, which is the Japanese name, uh, which is going to be Fairy Dark, and it resembles a wolf. That would be really cool. I'd like to see that. Seems the other Tapus are there to stop it because it is the Guardian Deity of Rebellion. I mean, I could see the Tapus being in the game. Obviously, they were not in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And, you know, what other Pokemon were not in Scarlet and Violet? The Generation 6 Legendaries now make sense because, obviously, we're getting Legend ZA. So, Xerneas, Yveltal, Zygarde are going to be in that game. Uh, the Tapus very well could be in the game as well. Also, the Ultra Beasts as well. I, I definitely think, like, my... My headcanon is that we're going to have a Ultra Beast section of this game. I think they're going to like attack Kalos or something like that because they weren't in the game. Um, and I think that maybe is why the Tapus also are kind of in the game as well to stop the Ultra Beasts. I think that would be really cool because why else would you not include them in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Like, we have the Beast Ball and everything. All the legendaries are in the game barring the Generation 6 legendaries, which is obviously because of Legend ZA the tapus and the ultra beasts and i know the ultra beasts are not legendary pokemon but um they've been in you know every game since they were in sword and shield and they had absolutely nothing to do in that game um so why weren't they in scarlet and violet you know uh, i i think that uh, i think they're going to play a role in in the in the story or maybe that's the reason like maybe you're building the city and it's nothing to do with zygarde maybe the ultra beasts come in attack the city and then that's why zygarde has to mega evolve to protect the ecosystem and then the tapus are also there as well Maybe that's the whole situation, which would be cool. Like, we all think that Zygarde's going to be the evil one, but he's actually trying to protect the ecosystem. So maybe it's because of the Ultra, Ultra Beast, and that would give us more Ultra Beasts as well, uh, you'd like to think. I don't know. I think it'd be a cool idea. Uh, the A in ZA is a new Pokemon that is driving crazy other Pokemon in the game. Uh, Al Algnarok, which is Steel Dragon, uh, that has a Mega as well. It's the opposite of Zygarde and wakes up when the world has to be brought back to zero. Why would the world have to be brought back to zero? Uh, Algnarok is the other 50% uh, of Zygarde turned into something else. Okay, so it's like a sort of, uh, I guess a little bit like of a Curum situation with Reshiram and Zekrom, where they're just kind of like, they're a fusion, but they're also split maybe. Um, Mega Zygarde is totally different from the 100% form, and it's a mix of humanoid with dragon slash animal features. It has horns resembling a viking of some sort. The 10% form and the 100% form aren't in the game. That, I, I can't really see them having a game without all the Zygarde forms when it's literally about Zygarde. It, it just wouldn't really make sense. Uh, Yveltal, Xerneas, and Zygarde are driven mad by the A-Presence, how it's called during the game. You have to fight them in the Mega form to free them. And then it says, uh, Dridagon has an evolution, which is going to be Dragon Fairy. That is the riding Pokemon for flying. Flying is a proper one and not a long glide like in the past. I mean, we got a proper one in Scarlet and Violet. You just got it through the DLC. Um, but I guess, like, obviously with Hisui and Braviary, that's not a proper one because, yeah, it just glides down. Which, for me, it wasn't ideal. Like, the, the, the gliding thing wasn't really very good. I mean, I, I like the idea that in Scarlet and Violet, you can actually just fly wherever you want. It just makes it a lot more point. Like, it just makes it... It just gives it a reason. You know, when you can, when you can run fast and climb... The gliding aspect becomes a little bit pointless, in my opinion. But obviously, if you can fly anywhere, it's, it's a lot better. Uh, Pancham evolves into a regional variant of Pangoro, which is going to be Fighting Psychic. And it's the riding Pokemon to climbing, uh, or, the, or rather floating, since it gives you the ability to glide and climb like it's levitating on the spot. But what's the point of having gliding when we can fly? I don't really see the point of that. I mean, climbing also, I guess, becomes a little bit pointless as well, if we can just fly anywhere, but I don't know. And then it says, if you pre-order, you can obtain the Volcanion catchable mission. Um, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the pre-order bonus is always, or the early purchase bonus. Like, the pre-order bonus is completely different to the early purchase bonus. The pre-order bonus is what you get from wherever you buy it from. So whether you buy it from this shop, maybe you get, like, a key ring. You buy it from this shop, you get, like, I don't know, an extra 20 Pokeballs. The early purchase bonus 
is what you get from Pokemon themselves. That's been, you know, in the past, the Shiny Beldum, um, the Torchic, the the Munchlax, the, the Rockruff, stuff like that. The Pokemon that you get, like the Manaphy and BDSP, the Pokemon that you get from Pokemon, that's called the Early Purchase Bonus. The Pre-Order Bonus is where you actually buy it from. So, uh, like I say, Pokemon... The pre-order bonus from Pokemon is usually like an extra few Pokeballs here or there. Um, like the Steelbook case and stuff, like that's the pre-order bonus. Um, trying to think of other things that you can get. Like I think we had like figurines for the Stars Pokemon for uh, Scarlet and Violet, Sprigatito, Foycoco and Quack. Like, that was a pre-order bonus from certain locations. The pre-order bonus would not be locked. Uh, like an, a mission would not be locked by a pre-order bonus. It's an early purchase bonus. So um, because of that, I, th I think this is definitely false anyway. I don't know. I, I can't see us getting 50 new Pokemon and forms. Um, I do like the idea of another Tapu, and I think that's definitely plausible. I just think this is a little bit too out there. Very much fan fiction territory. But let me know your thoughts on this. Would you like it to be true or not? I mean, I'd love 50 new Pokemon or forms. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like it's very, very unlikely. Uh, and then also, let me know your thoughts on the Pokemon Go stuff as well that we've covered today. But either way, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell for daily Pokemon content. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.